Welcome to Personnel Economics, starring... Wait, hold on a minute. Have you stopped and thought about assumptions we made when we were discussing the bus bunching example in the previous video? Remember, fundamental assumptions are those that can be generalized to other settings. If you haven't stopped and thought about the assumptions we made when analyzing the bus bunching example through a personnel economic lens, please pause this video and think about that for a few minutes and then resume the video. Thanks. Welcome to Personnel Economics, starring the four assumptions. Fundamental assumptions are those that can be generalized to other settings, and several are key for personnel economics. Assumption one, workers and firms are rational and self-interested. Economic agents do the things that are best for themselves and are assumed to be very calculating in considering alternatives and ultimately choosing the options that maximize some objective like utility for individuals or profits for firms. Assumption two, money and other extrinsic rewards are very important. Work is therefore done for the paycheck. Non-monetary things like leisure or effort are converted to dollar equivalents to determine their worth or cost. Assumption three, work is lousy. Work is physically demanding, mentally tiring, and or emotionally draining, and it takes time away from leisure activities too. Maybe not at the beginning of the day or week, but at the end when there are pressures to work more than you want to. In economic jargon, work is not a source of utility. In fact, it's the opposite. It's a disutility in that the physical, mental, or emotional cost of effort or reduced leisure time lowers someone's utility and makes them worse off. So why work? See assumption number two, for the money. But remember assumption number one, when it's worth it. Assumption number four, markets impose discipline on organizations and workers. Organizations cannot be overly generous with compensation because at some point it will raise their prices too high and make them uncompetitive in the market for their products, or it will lower profits and make them unattractive in capital markets. They also cannot be too cheap because they will have difficulties recruiting and retaining workers. Workers too have to be mindful of the market. And if they demand too much, an employer can find somebody else willing to work for less, or the firm will be uncompetitive in other ways. And to the surprise of the four assumptions, we have a guest star. Workers and their effort are hard to perfectly observe. This is not an essential assumption because the standard predictions result from the four key assumptions. But without this, the HR implications can be trivial. That is, the implication would always be, do more monitoring of workers. But that's an overly easy solution. It's better to have to think about solutions that don't simply involve more monitoring. So this guest assumption that workers and their effort are hard to perfectly observe will be with us for much of the course, and also with you when you apply the results in everyday HR situations long after you are done with this course. So let's reflect back on the bus bunching example, and we can see illustrations of these assumptions in the way that I talked about the bus bunching example in the earlier video. And what we want to identify here are fundamental assumptions. Assumptions that um, can be applied or generalized to other settings. So it's not so specific to driving a bus, but we want to think about it or phrase it in ways that can be generalized to other settings. So again, the first assumption is that workers and firms are rational and self-interested. The way I talked about the bus bunching example, right, we are assuming that drivers will not adjust their spacing simply out of goodwill, simply to help the bus company, simply to be nice to passengers. Right? They're more self-interested thinking about their own utility, their own rewards. Another way in which we could see this assumption reflected in my discussion of the bus bunching example was um, in that we assume that drivers will engage in behaviors that increase their own rewards even though it might harm others. Remember the research found that accidents more likely when drivers were paid per passenger. And right, this is not just an assumption about workers, it's really an assumption about all economic agents. So for example, bus companies are also assumed to want to maximize their own objective function, maybe profitability or something to do with um, high quality service for low cost or in a cost effective way, something along those lines. The second assumption, money and other intrinsic rewards are very important. 
Um, how did we see that reflected in our discussion of the bus bunching example? Well, on the driver side, right, we we're implicitly assuming that drivers would be motivated by additional pay. That's why we spent time talking about different ways um, that there could be to pay the drivers and how we might expect their behavior to be different. If we weren't assuming that money was important, then we wouldn't um, necessarily think that changing the pay structure or the pay formula would change driver behavior. And um, again, these are assumptions for all economic agents. So for example, we could see this reflected on the bus company side in our discussion of the bus punching example in that you know, we're assuming implicitly that you know, companies wanted to get good value for the compensation that they were paying for the workers. So they're just, not just going to sort of throw more money at the workers without expecting to get some benefits in return. Assumption number three, work is lousy. How did we see this in the bus bunching example? Well, we're assuming that um, it actually takes more work for drivers to pay attention and concentrate. Um, maybe it's more stressful to maintain spacing, right? So it doesn't come easy. And so that's why we're assuming that workers would be, or at least economic oriented drivers would be looking to be paid more to compensate them for their additional effort of maintaining some spacing with the bus in front of them. Um, similarly, um, we were implicitly assuming that drivers don't derive any uh, fulfillment or satisfaction from being a safe driver or serving passengers. Um, right, we're assuming instead that work is lousy, going back to previous assumptions, emphasizing extrinsic rewards, not intrinsic rewards in a personnel economics approach to HR issues. Assumption number four, markets impose discipline on organizations and workers. Now, throughout this course, sometimes this might be more in the background, not quite as visible as the first three assumptions, but it's going to be important. Again, the markets are lurking there behind workers, behind organizations, uh, keeping them in check. Um, on the driver's side, right, we're assuming that they're paying attention to the labor market. Um, if they uh, perform excessively poorly, they might be fired and they'll have to go find another job in the labor market, which might not be a very favorable for thing for them to do, um, right? So they're keeping, might be keeping an eye on the market that way. Um, bus companies, other organizations, right, can't compensate their workers in way that, ways that outpace the market. They can't be overly generous, um, both because of concerns with the product market as well as concerns with the labor market. Right, although the labor market can certainly be the opposite, can't be too stingy, right? You need to pay enough to recruit and retain workers. And again, um, we're talking about examples from the bus bunching uh, case, but notice how all of these things can be generalized to other situations, right? So they're really seen as fundamental assumptions, um, right? All organizations need to be mindful, or at least in an economics paradigm, we'd be assuming that all, economic, all organizations need to be mindful of the market, not just bus companies, obviously. And then let's not forget our special guest star, this so-called optional assumption, optional key assumption, workers in their effort are hard to perfectly observe. Right? In the bus context, right, we're assuming that um, Bus drivers have some autonomy, they're out on the road by themselves, and so they can't you know, be commanded to simply um, drive a certain way. It's not easy to monitor them. Yes, the bus company could put a manager on every bus to watch them, but presumably that would be quite expensive. Um, and then who would monitor the managers? And then who would monitor the monitors of the managers as well? Right? Because an economics paradigm would be assuming that they're self-interested and uh, work is difficult for them, and so they wouldn't be doing any extra if they're not being compensated for their effort either. Okay, well, why am I starting out the course with so much emphasis on recognizing these assumptions, being very explicit in understanding the assumptions that personnel economics are bringing to uh, HR problems? Well, you know, first I want to emphasize that this isn't unique to personnel economics might be unique the way that I'm making them explicit in the beginning of this course, but that doesn't mean that other approaches to HR, other approaches to business don't have their own assumptions, right? All approaches to managing workers based on assumptions about workers, their goals, their preferences, nature of work, 
what kind of rewards people might be looking for or getting from work, and also assumptions about the, about the employment relationship. Um, do workers and organizations have um, interests that can always be aligned? Are there power differentials? Do they have interests that are unique to themselves? And so therefore you have conflicts of interest. All approaches to managing people, whether rooted in economics or psychology or sociology or other types of disciplines or paradigms, all involve assumptions. And so it's always important to recognize these assumptions, but in the context of this course with personal economics, I'll highlight two reasons why um, I think it's important to start by recognizing these assumptions at the beginning of the course. First, being explicit about this might help you with material as the course unfolds. All right, some of the uh, predictions, some of the results might seem a little curious because you know, they're different than the implications that are derived from other approaches to human resources. And if it seems odd, go back to the underlying assumptions that might help. Oh yeah, we're assuming that work is lousy. We're assuming that workers are motivated by money rather than intrinsically, and then the results will hopefully make more sense. The other very important reason to recognize the assumptions that underlie personnel economics is because by being explicit about this, it can, it can help you in practice better assess when those assumptions are realistic when trying to manage a worker, a set of workers, or um, an organization more broadly. Right? And this helps reinforce that personal economics can have real power, real power of insight when the assumptions fit. Um, when the assumptions fit, gives you an important way of understanding what's driving workers, what you might need to guard against, and the types of um, you know, incentive mechanisms that might be useful or might uh, have unintended consequences. But at the same time, recognizing these assumptions right, can help you um, remember that there are limitations to all paradigms as well, in particular when the assumptions of the models don't fit particular workers or organization, then uh, applying the results of that paradigm is going to be misguided, might even be harmful. Um, and so it's very important to recognize the assumptions that you're making when coming up with models for managing people because um, it will only be a wise thing to do to apply those results when the assumptions actually fit the context in which you're working. And if you don't think carefully about what those assumptions are, that's very difficult to do. So when studying and when applying personnel economics in practice, do not forget the four key assumptions and also remember the special guest assumption too.